G'day, uh, Jason Fox here and today I've got Rachel Green in the studios and Rachel's an emotional intelligence coach and professional speaker. She's been practicing mindfulness meditation since 1987. It's a long time. <laughs> and has actually used this, this practice to cure her of panic attacks, which is purely awesome and we're going to get into that soon. But perhaps before, how, what is mindfulness meditation and, and how can it help people? Mindfulness meditation is a way of coming into the present moment. So it's to make sure that instead of worrying about what's going to happen, like the future exam or the future job interview, that you actually are right here, right now, in the present moment, non-judgmentally, just being aware of all your senses and concentrating on what you're actually doing 100% fully. So for exams it's so important because instead of worrying about the next question you focus on that question. The night before instead of worrying about the consequences of failing the mm -hmm. exam you're focusing on the study that you're doing, you're focusing on going to sleep. So you're actually right here right now. So important. I, I can remember countless exams and I'm sure that many students can relate to this where they get to their exam table, they have a wonky desk, there's someone with a snotty nose within 360 degrees of them. They've got a adjudicator that's prancing around and looking at them. And there's so many different things that can take them away from um, what they need to be focusing on. Yeah, they get distracted. Yeah, and then the biggest thing with anxiety though is what if, what if this happens? What if that mm. happens? Um, or regrets about the past. Oh, I wish I'd read that article. Mm. I wish I'd studied that. Oh, I wish I'd asked the teacher this. So uh, being in the present moment means that you let go of the anxieties and what-ifs of the future and you let go of the regrets of the past so that you just focus on a fully present. Um, one of the big mindfulness meditation gurus is called John Kabat-Zinn and he talks about be 100% fully present with 100% of your marbles. Don't just go into an exam or into a meeting or into an interaction or talking to someone with only 20% of your marbles or 40% of your marbles or 60%. Mm. Go with 100%. Think how much better you'll do in an exam if everything else is clear and you're just focused right here, right now. Mm. Gosh, I can imagine that sometimes this is easier said than done, which is why you need a lot of practice in this. Where's a place that people can maybe start if they want to be more mindful? Um, eating, okay. because lots of us oh, love to eat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd like that yeah. Jason. So eating meditation, you just take a piece of food and very slowly eat it so that you actually fully taste it. So you start to notice the foods in your mouth and you start to chew very slowly so that what happens is you start to actually taste your food and then you start to notice what is the tongue doing? What saliva is there in the mouth? What are your cheeks doing? What is your mind doing? What are you paying attention to? So you eat and be fully present with the eating. And I had a, a man the other day, I did this with a large group, and he put his hand up at the end and said, I realise that after 45 years, I've never fully tasted my food. Mm. I gave them all a sultana. Sultana to have a meditation on. We took 15 minutes to eat the Sultana. So we got people to smell it, we got people to look at it, we got people to feel it, we got people to hear it. It crinkles, the Sultana crinkles. And then we got people to taste it. So that they put all their senses just into this one Sultana. And at the end, um, I did it with a group of 40 last week, they were so calm. They were just, they were so stressed when they came in and they were so calm at the end. Mm. So food's really easy to Gosh. practice because you always have to eat. And uh, there's, several, there's several points along a student's pathway that may derail them from mindfulness, whether it's when they arrive at an exam room and all their friends are comparing how stressed they are and they've got this frantic person flipping their notes and, <sighs> or if they get a question that suddenly they haven't studied for and they're really worried about that. What's the way that they could perhaps navigate through those? And I think you practice mindfulness well before exam time. Mm. So you don't just go into an exam and go, now I'm going to be mindful. Yeah. You go, now I'm going to practice. So practice every day just for a little bit. Even if it's just, you're just having a meal and just practice mindfulness once a day for 10 minutes. Then when the exams come, it's already a habit. 
If it's already a habit, then it's much easier to do. And then you are less likely to panic or get anxious when you see a question you don't know. Mm. Your thinking is more likely to be clear so that the answers will arrive in the moment rather than you going into that terrible anxious struggling. Mm -hmm. So it's about practicing and I'd always do it the night before so that you need to get a good night's sleep. Stop the cramming, go and meditate, ease off, let the mind calm down, have a good night's sleep and then when you get there you won't be so disturbed by those students who aren't mindful. Mm -hmm. And if you've got um, between exams practice meditation as well and then after an exam practice it because that's also a time people freak out they start to hear what everybody else has mm, said mm. and then they go oh, I didn't say that but if you start to freak out then it affects the next exam yeah. so I'd be practicing mindfulness meditation before an exam in between an exam and after an exam yeah, and then throw out, I guess, because I can see this helping yeah. in so many areas. I, I think back to the number of times I've had a phone call where I haven't actually been present in the phone yeah. call, and then afterwards I have this regret that I didn't listen as much as yeah, I could. Yeah, you don't know what they said. Mm. Mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking anxiety has come up a few times, and if students don't immediately or have exams coming up in the near future, they may be feeling fairly anxious about their study workload. They may think that it's so big, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So they don't start and then the anxiety grows mm -hmm. and it grows and grows. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest in this situation? Start with any step and one step. So um, anxiety will become overwhelming, but if you think about um, just focusing and meditating for 10 minutes and then starting, that will probably be easier because it, it calms your whole mind. And, and when people are anxious, their minds get very, very restless and they have this monkey mind and then they go over and over and over and over and over and over it. And instead what you can do when you meditate is just to let all that restlessness go. It's like holding a heavy weight. If you keep a heavy weight held in your hand, hour after hour after hour, it becomes so heavy it becomes impossible to deal with. Meditation is saying, put that heavy weight, which is the exam, down. Mm. Just rest it. Even if it's 10 minutes later, you pick it back up. It's nowhere near as heavy as if you'd held it for half an hour or three hours. So it gives your whole mind and your whole body a rest and there's some fabulous research. So um, there's lots and lots of uh, neuroscientific um, research being done at the moment on mindfulness meditation. And one of the um, researchers, uh, Professor Richard Davidson in the US. He's actually taken groups who have practiced mindfulness meditation for only eight weeks, for only 45 minutes a day, and he has proven that you can get measurable changes of a positive nature in the brain between those who've done the eight weeks and those who haven't. Uh, it's just quite astounding. And they've also shown um, by injecting people with flu that those who have meditated for that eight week period have a stronger immune system than those who don't. Oh. How good is that for exams? Gosh, they should be teaching this in schools. Uh, oh, I do think they should mm. be teaching it in schools. Mm. In fact, one of my friends is a teacher and mm -hmm. she did. Uh, she used to teach it in schools to her little children. She used to call it quiet time. Mm. So that they'd mm. all learn just to quieten down and calm down. And if you calm for an exam, you're going to do so much better. Mm. I just imagine the, the power of a, a whole classroom or a whole year level of students that have an awareness of, of the power of this entering an exam and yeah. completely calm collected state would be because everybody feeds off each mm, other so mm. if everybody else is in a panic it's so much easier to get in a panic if you're all quite calm mm. and you can walk in, you could walk into an exam mindfully you could just go I notice my foot on the floor, I notice this foot on the floor, I notice this foot on the floor, and this foot on the floor. Just go into your senses and let the past go and the future go, and just notice. And then sit on your chair mindfully. Notice mm -hmm. how you're sitting, where your back is, where your hands are. So you just bring yourself into your senses in the present moment, and then the exam will be easier. Mm. Wow, gosh. And that's how I cured that's... myself of panic attacks. Yeah, yeah. I used to sit there and I used to actually notice my breath. I'd sit, I'd have panic attacks, particularly at three o'clock in the morning. So I'd get up and I'd sit and I'd just notice 
the anxiety. I actually just noticed it and became mindful of the anxiety. Mm. And I noticed it, it, it got worse and then it got better. So it, it arises and then it fades away. And you can use the breath to do the same thing. You can just sit there and go, oh, I just noticed that I'm breathing in. And you don't have to take a huge breath. <laughs> mm. Your breath is already moving mm. your body without you doing mm -hmm. anything. So don't change your breathing. Just simply be with it. Just notice it going in and notice it going out. That's really cool. Mindfully breathing in and mindfully breathing out. Breath in and breath out. That's all you have to do. You don't have to change the breath. It's, it's funny because I always have this impression that you have to... No, you know, do, do that's this so deep breath. Yeah, yeah. That's no, true. the breath is moving your body every day, every minute. Otherwise, you're not listening to this video. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, if you're breathing, your breath does it automatically. Just be with the breath. Notice the breath. Don't see you've done a deep breath again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, <laughs> just try not to breathe. <laughs> um, no, you're breathing already. I know, I know. I you know. don't have to make it harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so. you can't concentrate. <laughs> okay, yeah, so fine. just go back to just allowing the breath to come in and then allowing the breath to go out. <laughs> So, so you can. You I can, can do it better than Jason. Can imagine I can when tell you're you. an exam. <laughs> this, this, oh, it's, it's brilliant. So you don't have to go. Because no. you know, I've, I've done yoga before, and they're very disciplined on the breath. And you know, sometimes it's breathe in through one nostril, breathe out through the other, and there's all these. Well, you can do that if you want to, but you don't have to okay. because That's... every time you go, you're tensing. Can you not see that in your body? That's actually tense. You don't want to be more tense. Mm. So um, this is about not doing anything. It's about just being with whatever is there, mm -hmm. just staying with it, allowing it, being there non-judgmentally in the present moment as it is right now. In, instead of attempting to resist it. Yeah, okay. and alter it and do something and complain about it and not like just... it and think your breath should be slower or mm, faster or doing it higher right. or do yeah, yeah. no mm. no just allow yourself to be here right now with whatever is happening great and and so you, this helped you to cure yourself of the panic attacks and you've, totally. you've got four degrees as well so you've, <laughs> yes. you've been able to use this to <laughs> I've to worked out exams <laughs> yeah 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 so um i would um often before any difficult situation mm. whether it's an exam whether it's public speaking mm. whether it's going to a difficult meeting whether it's talking to somebody who i find a little hard i'll often meditate first and then i calm down my mind is clear and then I can do whatever I need to do without taking anxiety into it. So anxiety's made, um, anxiety's made a huge difference to my life, but mindfulness meditation is the thing that's calmed me. I haven't had a panic attack for years. And, and exams, it, uh, you can walk into an exam, I, I won't cram the night before, for mm -hmm. instance, um, and I know that I just need to be fully present in the exam and give it my best shot, which means I need to be calm and mindful mm. and then be fully present with what I think the exam questions ask. Because mm. if you've got anxiety, you might actually miss what the question's mm. about. Mm. So, yeah, it, it really does help. And doing assignments, just sitting there and writing things and preparing and reading, be fully present, you'll absorb more. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay, if, if the viewers... If the people watching this would like to find out more about you, where, where should they go to? <laughs> uh, please go to my website, uh, rachelgreen.com. I have a second website, confidentwoman.com.au, that you can also visit. Both sites have information on mindfulness meditation. And I also have a CD set called Happy Not Hassled, mm. a two CD set which has mindfulness meditations on it. And I also talk on there about how to manage your own anxiety and, they and anger. Yeah, fantastic. Because <laughs> some people get angry around the yeah, exams, you know. The exam so stress, tension. So I talk mm. about how to use mindfulness meditation in those situations to manage your emotions. So happy, not hassled. It's called, mm -hmm. and it's on both confidentwoman.com.au okay. and rachelgreen.com. Fantastic. I'll have the websites appearing at the bottom. Of Beautiful. The screen. Thank you. Jason. This is this is wonderful. Rachel's helped me uh, in my uh, public speaking skills and being more mindful in that sense. And she just. Absolutely wonderful. I really encourage you to uh, get onto our websites and find out more. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank your you, Jason. Today. Keep calm. <laughs>